the 10 best Halo multiplayer maps of all time. Is this list accurate? Or do you think it's kind of a bunch of BS? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again, give you another Halo video. Today we're doing a review kind of video of a top 10 list I recently came across of best Halo multiplayer maps of all time. So if you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know want to see some more content like this as this is a new type of video. So I'll see how you guys like it or don't like it. Now let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you have your own list as well, leave it in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. The website Game Rant right here put together a ranking the 10 best Halo multiplayer maps of all time, which I was like, that's quite the bold statement, especially since a map preference is rather subjective rather than objective. I mean, some definitely are better than others, but it ultimately kind of comes down to personal preference and opinion of what kind of map and gameplay style that you like. But I looked through this list and I was like, I don't know about that one. But let's start off right going through this list here, guys. And they go for number 10 is Zenith, which is the Halo 2 anniversary version of the map Ascension. And yeah, this is a solid map. I mean, this is kind of one of those more, I say, iconic Halo maps because it's such a unique format. And, you know, I haven't really come across any kind of map that plays like this in the Halo at all. I mean, it still kind of has like that three lane kind of format, right? You got the lower left section here. You can go through the middle or you can kind of go through the bridges on the right, but then you kind of go throughout the way. So it kind of has that basic format to it really and the countering bases. But, uh, you know, to be like the greatest maps of all time, I mean, you can make an argument for it. Uh, they don't really do that great of a job of an argument for it. Just saying that uh, it's from Halo 2 and it's cool. That's about it. And they mentioned like a Banshee and like, yeah, the Banshee on this map, I don't like 4v4 maps with vehicles at all in them, unless they're just trying to suppose, supposed to get you from A to B. But when it comes to actual gameplay, the Banshee on this map can be quite annoying, but you do have the rocket launcher that has a lock on to it as well. You have plasma pistols and uh, you know, there's ways to counter it, but it can get quite annoying. Number nine on their list is Beaver Creek from Halo 2. They specifically mention here, that uh, the original is named Battle Creek, but uh, Beaver Creek they kind of like more was the improvements in Halo 2, which I would kind of agree with. My personal preference is actually Battle Canyon from Halo Reach, because what it did, it added in these different pathways on the sides, so it kind of gives you some more ability to kind of just get navigate through the map uh, without having to use the teleporters, and also uh, makes it so it's less choke pointy and forcing so much action in the middle of the map. It's a solid map. It's kind of more in those iconic Halo maps, so it might not necessarily be like one of the best made maps, but it's one of those maps when you think of Halo, you think of Beaver Creek. Number eight here, they mentioned Prisoner, which actually kind of surprised on this list option. I mean, Prisoner's a solid map, especially the remake in Halo Reach. I feel like it's probably the better version of it as well. Uh, just because again, you have more options of uh, different pathing throughout the level. One version of this map I actually really did like back in the day, and they mentioned it right here, at uh, Rockets to the Equation to make it fun, is uh, playing Prisoner Rockets. I actually really enjoyed that mode back in the day, back in Combat Evolved, just because it's just complete chaos and fun. The map is so small, but yet vert so vertical at the same time. That gives you some different gameplay elements right there. And Prisoner Rockets for a social kind of like uh, Fiesta style, yeah, it's pretty fun. But for like an actual like standard 4v4 map, uh, I don't think this map makes top 10. Number seven, they have the pit. And yeah, the pit's one of the greatest maps of all time, in my opinion. I'd put this easily top five of all time, if not top three, top two even. I mean, I absolutely love the pit. I just, the gameplay elements to it are just fantastic. The basis, I have counter sniping options to it. You get plenty of power weapons, power ups, and uh, different angles to play around. And the symmetry of the map as well leaves it to more just like the player's ability to outdo the other team. It's more up to players' wits and abilities to beat each other. And that's kind of what I really like when it comes to my multiplayer experience when it comes to Halo. But you know, at least it's on the top 10. I agree with it. I would definitely would put it higher, but at least it's on the list. Number six, they mentioned Zanzibar from Halo 2. Now, obviously this is a great map because well, it started out in Halo 2, was remade in Halo 3. Then it was remade in Halo 2 Anniversary because you kind of had to remake that one for Halo 2. Uh, my personal preference would actually be Last Resort from Halo 3 because it opens up that back area with the sniper rifle of Camp Froman. You have that extra path to kind of go up around. It kind of opens up that area a little bit more. Gives it just more gameplay variation, even if you didn't use that 
too much. I actually put this in my what, top five greatest maps of all time video because this map is so versatile. It does great in CTF. It does great in one flag, one bomb. It does great in BTB. It does great in 4v4. It does, it's just a very well balanced map and I really do enjoy this one. Uh, again, like six out of 10, you know, I would, like I said, put it higher, but uh, at least it's on the list right here. And that's kind of my opinion on that one. And also just the visuals of this map just scream Halo because when you see this gigantic windmill in the middle of the map, you can't help but think that's a Halo map. That's Zanzibar. That's one of the more iconic structures within a Halo map that's ever been made. So uh, good design on this list. I like that. Good choice. Number five is Boardwalk. <laughs> boardwalk okay yeah that is um that's a that's a decision yeah that's a decision i don't know how they came to that conclusion we can read their description here saying halo reach contains a variety of exceptional maps and it's debatable which one of them are the best the map has a smart and intuitive appearance. Its futuristic design is spectacular it is the one map that is commonly forgotten um it's forgotten because it's bad. Team Slayer and team based modes work well on Boardwalk. The action tends to be focused in the center of the map. So keep your head up and your weapon loaded as you walk across the Boardwalk. Okay, real talk here. I do not like playing Boardwalk. One is because it's a constant battle for that top sniper position because you have the height advantage and a power weapon spot right there as well. So you're constantly just battling for that one spot on the map. You're basically switching spawns. Sometimes you overtake them, sometimes you don't. If I'm playing Team Slayer, it's almost always a time limit game. If a game on Boardwalk goes to 50 kills, I'm very surprised. I remember during the Reach days that playing Boardwalk, it was guaranteed time limit match like 35 to 40 or something like that. An absolute snooze fest. And Reach as a whole was heavily criticized for its map design as it definitely did try some new things and tried making maps designed around these different kind of abilities that you had for starting out with. And it just kind of didn't really work at all. Like what's the part about Boardwalk that makes it so fun? If you like this map, guys, let me know in the comment section down below because, oh gosh, this is just, this map, it's like the only cool thing about this map is the lower spawn. You can actually get to the rockets faster than the upper spawn location. Uh, if you just kind of take this little side route to the right, hop over the fence kind of thing, and then kind of fall down. It's actually kind of a unique little way to get to like the rockets. It's a little more skilled jump way, more fast, effective and faster, but it's a little more high risk. So that's one cool thing about this map that I utilize all the time when playing it. But whenever I'm the other team spawning at the lower end of the map and I don't have the sniper rifle, I can't handle this map at all. There's so many camping locations. People just hide up on that upper back side of the map and just wait for you to come there. And it's just really annoying to play against. It's super slow and like it's I number five better than the pit better than Zanzibar better than Beaver Creek better than Ascension I mean bruh okay now we can get back to some sanity here because they have number four they put on Guardian Guardian's a fantastic map one of the most loved maps in the Halo 3 sandbox and so it's definitely appreciated and I definitely do like this map a lot uh, they did mention that it's great for ball and team doubles in here which I would agree in the hardcore variation they only play oddball because uh, for hardcore Slayer, it's not that fun. It's very standoffish. Uh, but that's why you need to have like an objective, maybe like a King of the Hill or Oddball works well on this map. But when it's just Team Slayer, it's rather standoffish and doesn't really play out super well. And it's kind of hard to navigate through without being very obvious that you're like jumping through a man cannon or walking through the bottom middle of the map where you can just get lasered from a sniper rifle spawn. Though to its small size and intuitive design, I will say that this is a great map and I definitely do enjoy playing it a lot. Number three, they have Ivory Tower. I don't, I just don't agree with that. I just don't. I feel like Ivory Tower just kind of falls along the same kind of problems as Boardwalk has where everyone just fights for that one spot on the map where the sniper rifle spawns in the high ground right there. If you're not up there, you're basically just wasting the entire rest of the map just trying to figure out ways to get up there and it's super difficult because you really only have three routes. You have the two side locations and the elevator that goes up top. That takes forever to get up there and if you see someone on the map, bottom, you, if you're looking at your radar, you're just gonna crouch walk and wait for them to come up there and back smack them. It's really annoying. And the only way to really kind of knock them out of that is if you're able to pick up those rockets, but the rockets are bottom mid in the open 
where the guy with the sniper rifle up there has the high ground advantage that can easily take you out with a battle rifle or a sniper rifle or literally any mid-range weapon. It's just number three for one of the greatest maps of all time. Like I know people liked it back in Halo 2. I never was a fan of it. It's, I just feel like it's super slow. It doesn't really have good flow to the map. It's very stagnant. And it's just the same strategy every single time. And again, number three, this, they say this map is better than Guardian, better than the pit. Are you kidding me? It's just like this constant cat and mouse game in the top mid, like who's gonna like, you know, over peak the corner and get attacked by three people hiding up top. That's not fun. Okay, now we go back to some more sanity in the situation because we have Lockout at number two. Number two for Lockout, I would agree with that. This is one of the most iconic maps in Halo history. Uh, the action on it is fun. Love, it's pretty good. Again, like does kind of come across very standoffish issues, but there are weapons and ways to counter uh, different positions and strategies on this map. Though I have seen plenty of hardcore matches when they were doing uh, HCS for H2A uh, that, that they showcase like a lot of like Slayer games on this map. And they were like, you know, 25 to 30 kind of games. And like there were just very standoffish kind of stuff. Uh, so in competitive, it cannot really play out the best, but for Halo 2, it's kind of the best you have really. But on the social side, side of things, things are a little bit more crazy. You, you know, people try and do weirder, well, funkier tactics than usual. So I don't think it's not that crazy of a choice right there. Uh, I think actually the H2A version where they add in the stalactites up top, do kind of help break these kind of setups like you would see like at BR Tower or at, especially at Snipe Tower as well. Uh, just to kind of give also some more interactivity. I actually kind of like it. It's fun. And plus you can, you know when the stalactites are coming, they're pretty obvious. You hear them, you see them, like if you get killed by them, it's because you weren't paying attention. And number one, I totally agree with this. It's coagulation from Halo 2. Yes, any version of Blood Gulch is pretty much like my go-to number one map of all time. Uh, even back from Combat Evolved, like this map is just iconic Halo. Back in the CE days, all we did was just, you know, System Link, Capture the Flag, Blood Gulch. In Halo 2, they brought in Coagulation, which I feel is like kind of like the improved version of it. Uh, I do actually do like the H2A version of it as well. I mean, it, visually it looks stunning. I do like the addition of more cover in different locations, just so that it plays you know, a little bit better. You can, you know, move throughout the map a little better. The only issue I feel like with the map like uh, Blood Gulch or Coagulation, uh, this version of the maps, is that you need projectile precision weapons. So something like it worked well, you know, in the Halo 2 because you had to lead your shots a little bit with the battle rifle. It worked well in CE because you had to lead your shots with the Magnum, even though it's still like a three shot kill at any distance. You still have, and ha but it had random bolt spread and you had to lead your shot rather considerably to be able to hit shots accurately. Though when it came to like the Re Halo Reach version, which was hit scan, um, they, people just sat back with DMRs the whole time and just picking each other off. Like it was no flow to the map, whatever. It was kind of unplayable. And in H2A, it kind of has that same feeling where if you're in the center of the map, it's kind of a dead man zone because of how accurate the battle rifle is and those kind of weapons make it really difficult to move throughout the map. So you need more cover because uh, all you need to do is just point and click. You don't need to lead or, you know, calculate you know, you know, lead time when it comes to shooting your weapon. And you know, this was number one on my top five list as well. Uh, just as long as you have projectile wep precision weapons, then I think you're fine. I've kind of had the idea of maybe doing like a extensive breakdown of the map of Blood Gulch and its different variations and how in Halo Infinite they should bring back this map in particular and what ways they should bring it back because each new variation has some new gameplay elements or new geometry that would be make it better or worse for the map. So I would kind of like to think about doing a video for that. If you'd like to see it, let me know in the comment section down below. So your guys' thoughts on this top 10 list, in my opinion, it's okay. I, mean, I think they had some good notes, like saying Coagulation number one, they had Lockout in there, they had the Pits, they had Guardian, they had Zanzibar, um, they also had you know, Beaver Creek, you know, Ascension or Zenith, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, those are solid choices, but man, did they have some hot takes. Like, they're literally going to be putting Boardwalk in the top five greatest maps of all time in Halo. And Ivory Tower, like, it's okay, but number three all time? I don't even think it makes a 10. Put your top 10 in the comment section down below, guys. I do like all of them and try to apply to most of them as well. If you missed any news or information from me recently, check out the videos on the screen over here. I got a list of all my other videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.